In this lecture, we will talk about the risk management activities, the numerical analysis of the risks you identified in your project using the concept of the expected monetary value. Once you have identified the risks and ranked them according to the team's assessment using the qualitative risk analysis, you need to take your analysis a little further and make sure that the numbers will back you up. This process is the quantitative risk analysis, and this process is optional. You need to execute this process only in the cases of having complex projects identified uh, risks that has a high probability or impact on your project. This is the reason why you should perform the quantitative risk analysis. Most of the tools for analyzing risk data are about figuring out how much the risk will end up costing you. The expected monetary value, EMV, is a method used widely to establish contingency reserve requirements for both budget and schedule. So the expected monetary value will provide you with the, the numerical, the scientific method of determining the exact required contingency reserves for your project. If you use this technique for all of your risks, you can ask for a risk contingency budget to cover the impact of your project if one or more of the identified risks occur. The expected monetary value is a risk management technique to help quantify and compare risks in many aspects of the project. The expected monetary value can be defined as a quantitative risk analysis technique since it relies on specific numbers and the quantities to perform the calculations. The key difference between using the expected monetary value and using the subjective analysis that in the expected monetary value you will rely on numbers, specific numbers, not only on high level approximations like very high or medium or very low or low. The phrase expected monetary value analysis refers to a specific analytical technique in which a calculation is made to determine the average of all potential outcomes when the future includes a number of particular scenarios that may or may not ultimately happen. The formula, simply, it's the probability in percentage multiplied by the impact, which is usually a budget or a schedule. A simple example on the expected monetary value, you have identified an opportunity with a 40% chance of happening. However, it may help you gain 2,000 US dollars if this positive risk occurs. Calculate the expected monetary value for this risk event. A very simple question, direct to the point. Multiply the probability by the impact. 40% by 2,000 US dollars will give you 800 US dollars. The thing which I want to tell you about is you need to give a positive sign for opportunities in the expected monetary value formula and a negative sign for the threats. Another example, in your project, you have identified two risks with a 20% and 15% chance of occurring. They will cost you 1,000 US dollars and 2,000 US dollars respectively if both of these risks happen. What's the expected monetary value of these risk events? It's very close to the first example. However, here we need to do the expected monetary value for both risks and do the sum and have the total expected monetary value. So we have two risks, both are threats, okay, as they will cost you 1,000, 2,000 US dollars. So you just need to multiply the probability by the impact of each risk and give a negative sign. The expected monetary value of two risk events or even for the project is the sum of the expected monetary value of all the individual risks given a positive sign for the opportunity and the negative sign for the threat. So in our example, it will be minus 200, minus 300. So total, it's minus 500 US dollars. One of the popular applications of the expected monetary value is the decision trees. They are used to show the probability and arrive at a dollar amount associated with each risk. It's a graphic representation of various alternative solutions that are available to solve a problem. It calculates the expected monetary value in more complex situations than the simple expected monetary value cases. 
it's a group of branches for each branch on this tree you need to compute the expected monetary value for the event a decision tree is a decision support tool that uses a tree-like graph or model of decisions and their possible consequences with the probability so it will support you selecting the right decision an example a project manager is trying to determine to buy a commercial solution or to do it in-house based on the decision tree shown below what's the expected monetary value of each decision so this is an example of a decision tree we have two branches a branch for buying the solution and a branch for building in-house if you will go to buying the solution there is a risk of failure with an impact of 5 million US dollars and a 10% probability with an initial cost of 2 million 250,000 US dollars now if you will go to the to the build in-house branch there is an initial cost of 1 million 325 US dollars with a risk of 30% probability and a 5 million US dollars impact simply we have two decisions either to do it or to outsource it the expected monetary value of buying it or outsourcing it is 10% probability by 5 million US dollars 500,000 US dollars doing it in-house we have a 30% probability by 5 million US dollars 1.5 million US dollars expected monetary value but to decide okay you need to add the initial cost for each decision buying it is the expected monetary value plus the initial cost while doing it in-house is the expected monetary value plus the initial cost so you will go with the buy commercial solution as it has a lower value this is the application of the decision tree analysis it will help you select the right decision another example refer to the diagram below what's the expected monetary value of result a in my exam i had a very similar question it's a very simple one with a small trick the question is asking about the expected monetary value of result a result a is here there is 200,000 US dollars value as an impact. There is 25% uh, probability, but you need to consider the 50% previously. This is the trick. So to reach to result A, there is 50% multiplied by 25%. This is the probability, not only the 25%. So the expected monetary value will be 50% multiplied by 25% multiplied by 200,000 US dollars so it is 25,000 US dollars the most important application of the expected monetary value concept is the reserves calculation reserve can be defined as a provision in the project management plan to mitigate cost and or schedule risk often used with a modifier which is the management reserve or a contingency reserve to provide further detail on what types of risk are meant to be mitigated there are two types of reserves the first one is used to deal with known unknowns known unknowns a risk is an unknown event okay it's an uncertain event so when it is a known unknown it means that this risk was identified it's unknown but we knew about it we identified it so we will use the contingency reserves for this type of risks while for the unknown unknowns we will use something known as the management reserves okay known unknown these uncertain events are identified using identify risks process but the amount to which they can affect project objectives is not predictable with a reasonable degree of confidence known as known unknowns they are the risks that remains after applying risk response strategies and they are known as residual risks in the risk register a reserve identified for these risks is known as the contingency reserves for unknown unknowns these are the risks that you don't know anything about they will just happen you were not able to identify them previously so we will deal with them using the management reserves and not the contingency reserves here is a quick a comparison between the contingency reserves and management reserves designed to deal with known unknowns while the management reserves are designed to deal with unknown unknowns 
For the contingency reserves, they are developed for the accepted risks remain after applying mitigation and risk response strategies, and these are the residual risks in the risk register, while for the management reserves, they were developed for unforeseen events, the ones they are not mentioned in the risk register. Contingency reserves are part of the performance measurement baseline. So usually, if you have 100,000 US dollars as a budget reserve, it will be part of the cost baseline, while for the management reserves, they are not. The contingency reserves are used when residual and or an accepted risk occurs, while management reserves are used when unforeseen events occur. The project manager will have the complete authority on the contingency reserves, while for the management reserves, we need a formal approval from the project sponsor. Example number five, you are managing a large construction project. The risk analysis efforts results are shown in the table below. Based on this information, what are the required cost contingency reserves for your project? So the question is asking about the cost contingency reserves, okay? Looking at this table, we have five risks, okay? Four of them will have an impact on the cost and one of them on, a, on the duration. So you should just need to ignore risk C as the question is asking about the cost contingency reserves. To find out the reserves, very simple, just determine the expected monetary value of each risk, okay? And do the sum. Given that a threat will add to the reserve, while an opportunity will reduce from the reserve. Again, a threat will add to the reserve while an opportunity will reduce the needed reserve. So you just need to calculate the expected monetary value of each risk and give a negative sign for the opportunity and a positive sign for the threat. In our case, we have risks A, B, D, and E, the ones impacting the budget, applying the expected monetary value formula P by I, we have three threats and one opportunity. You will give a negative sign for the opportunity and a positive sign for the threat. So the total reserve required for your project is 145,000 US dollars. Another example, you are done with all your project scope. Before the risk manager is released from the site, he is discussing with you the final version of the contingency reserves report of your project. As per the reserves report shown below, what's the amount of contingency reserve remaining on your project? So look at the table, we have six risks, okay? And the project is at the final stages. And the question is asking, what's the remaining contingency reserve of the 170,000 US dollars? In order to find out the remaining reserves, you need to look at the status of each risk, okay? We have two risks were occurred already risks C and D. Now, the trick in this example that when a risk occur already, the whole impact will be consumed from the reserves, not only the expected monetary value. Because the risk occurred already, the probability is 100%. It's not 30% anymore. It's not 20% anymore. So, when risk C occurred, the impact was 100,000 US dollars, not 30,000 US dollars. I hope you get my point. So to find out the remaining reserves, it's 170,000 US dollars minus the impact of both risks occur, risks C and D. So it's 170,000 US dollars minus 150,000 US dollars. So the remaining reserves will be 20,000 US dollars. Again, because the risk occur, so the whole impact was consumed, not only the Reserves. Remember, if a risk occurred, remove its impact, not its associated reserves. Another example, your project contingency reserves are 480,000 US dollars. Now you are middle path of your project and you want to update your reserves report, given that the most critical risk on the project was outdated, as it was due to heavy rain in winter and now we are in June. The probability and impact assigned for this risk were 20% and 300,000 US dollars respectively. What are the remaining reserves on your project? Again, this is a simple example. 
the total contingency reserves of the project were 480,000 US dollars. We have one risk that was outdated, it will never happen. So simply, you just need to remove or deduct the reserves associated with this risk from the total reserves. So the probability by impact of this risk will be 20% by 300,000 US dollars, which is 60,000 US dollars. Re removing 60,000 US dollars and, re and returning it back to the organization will keep 420,000 US dollars in your reserves report. Remember, if a risk was outdated, remove the associated reserves with the risk and not its impact. If it occurred, you need to remove its impact.